G'day folks, welcome to Australian Outback Proving Grounds video on my new lawnmower. 20 years ago I had my own gardening, landscaping, lawn mowing, yard maintenance business. So I do have some semblance of a clue as to what I'm talking about. Well, the lawnmower that I bought 20 years ago is a professional model. It's a mass port deck powered by a Briggs & Stratton motor. It costs a thousand dollars. That's twenty years ago. It cost a thousand dollars. It's a proper commercial model mower, and it has done tens of thousands of yards. It still runs, still runs very well actually, and has never missed a beat. But it's twenty years old. I have a nephew that has a new child, a new wife, a new home. He's only renting that home and he's got to do the right thing by his landlords, which is only to be expected. He doesn't have a lawnmower yet because he's only just starting out. So I'm going to give him my old lawnmower and I use that as an excuse to the wife to buy a new lawnmower. Hey, I'm happy. This little sweetheart is my dog Tilly. And Tilly is in my backyard, which unfortunately, you can see that the drought has had a pretty horrific effect on. Normally, this yard is pretty green, but we've been in drought. It's actually been the most enduring drought in Australian history. And to say that the grass growth is slack and pathetic is a very big understatement. The most luxurious time for lawn growth is actually in the cooler months. You get the winter rains, the sun's not so devastating, harsh. Yeah, this will grow back and in point of fact, normally I do keep it short, but you can see where I've actually, actually been letting it grow long, trying to encourage a bit of growth for this video. It's still, it's pretty sparse, the growth. Just before we go to the front yard, I'll give you a bit of a reminder as to our locale, what it's like. We're on the edge of town. This town has a population of perhaps 800, 900 people. Possibly, or it'll be, wouldn't be far different to that. So conditions aren't exactly conducive to doing a lawn mowing video, but hey, I'll do what I can. An autumn photo from five or six years ago of the same yard will give you an idea of the autumn lush growth we normally have. A top and bottom comparison is a little saddening and even worse is the front yard. This is a photo from 2014. Easter time, so it was April. Even the vacant block across the road had lush growth. But today, the warm weather, hot, dry conditions, the drought, all combined to cause the tender grass to die back. The chrysanthemums and the garden are all gone. The weeds have overtaken. I have no choice. I had to poison everything and start again. That patch of green that you see is a fresh growth of prickly weeds. Without drought, we'd have a gravel driveway that goes right around the house, surrounded on the other side by turfed areas. It would go from this side of the house, around the back, and come out at the driveway gate just there. My old lawnmower is reliable and has served me well but it does have its faults. Understanding those faults helps me to choose and will also hopefully help you to choose a new lawnmower. So let's just have a closer look at my old lawnmower for a moment. With yard maintenance, time is money. The more jobs you can fit in a day, the more money you make. I couldn't work as fast as I wanted to though, because my natural stride is a long one and I'd kick the catcher knocking it loose which would end up costing time, effort, and therefore money. 
I shortened my stride to compensate, but moving the legs quickly with shorter strides didn't exactly feel natural. I almost look like a power walker doing the mowing and you know how complicated looking that is. Four stroke mowers have oiled sumps, so if you need to tip it to the side, tip it towards the side that's opposite the air filter so you don't drench the air filter with oil. It's too hot and dry in the summer months for lawn growth, so the lawn mower is not needed, hence the cobwebs. A closer inspection shows its battle scars. A hole in the wheel. A crack in the front of the deck. Entire chunks missing from the aluminium deck. The starter cord needs replacing and the mechanism needs a clean out. A kink in the frame between the rear wheels. If I still had a yard and garden maintenance business, something that would be of concern to me is the number of blades. Instead of this better design with two blades at either end, my new mower simply has one long mower blade that stretches from side to side. Some yards that I'd service would be because of real estate rental inspections, etc. And the grass would be knee high or waist high. I couldn't always see the stones and sticks hidden beneath the level of the grass. And so these blades, which can actually hit something and absorb some of that impact by being able to fold back out of the way then, are a great advantage. My concern is that the single blade system has greater potential to damage the lawnmower's keystone. I know my own yard well, so that's not really a problem for me, but if you're looking for a new lawnmower for commercial reasons, that's something that you might want to bear in mind. So getting down to the nitty gritty, now we're up to the best points and worst points. This mower is a workhorse, yet it's still the quietest mower out of any four-stroke mower I have ever heard. Overall, it set a very high benchmark for any new mower to equal. But it does have one major flaw, and that's its ejection of clippings when you're not using a catcher. They call this system a smart shoot, and quite honestly, I won't go near another mower that has one. The basic concept is that that angled flap opens up and clippings are ejected out of it. Good in theory, but not in practice. Turf, lawn and ground covers have different characteristics. Some grasses are dry and won't clump. Clover, for example, is a wet ground cover and the clippings stick together. The design of this is basically a giant catchment, like a bowl and it catches all those clippings and builds them up and blocks it up. 99% of the time I ended up using the catcher because of this and that quite honestly is a purpose defeating thing. It broke at the hinges within the first year or two of ownership and quite honestly it's just an overcomplication that's unnecessary. It's costly to replace, I never bothered with it, I just fitted it back the hinges and used the catcher. I decided 18 or 20 years ago that the next mower would have to have a side chute, a proper, dedicated side chute. The final consideration should be the mower size. Getting something appropriate for the size of the yards that you want to work on. My business was based in Canberra and generally speaking, the yards were a lot smaller and the gardens were much more intricate than the ones that I have now. And so many months of research began. A list was made, four became two, two became one. Choice made, I got in the car and drove to the nearest Bunnings that had it in stock, four hours away. Before Corona, I would have simply had it shipped to my place. But with Corona, there's a lot fewer cars on the road. Supply goes up, demand goes down, prices fall through the floor. It was cheaper to pick it up myself than to have it shipped. 
I'd chosen the Toro 22 inch personal pace recycler self propelled lawnmower. Toro uses two engine manufacturers, Kohler and Briggs and Stratton, both made in the USA. It's good that this has a three year warranty because it turns out my Toro engine is made in China by a nameless, faceless manufacturer. I'm not saying that this is necessarily a bad thing because Toro has high manufacturing standards and China imports high grade Australian steel. I just had high hopes for another Briggs and Stratton after my last mower gave me 20 plus years of loyal service without a blemish on its record. And so enter the Toro 22 inch personal pace recycler self propelled lawn mower. It does have some assembly required, minimal assembly, and by minimal, I mean minimal. There are two bolts you have to do up to install the handle. You have to pour the oil in yourself, but the oil is supplied. Do you want to know? That's everything. Well, I've been thinking about you. And I think I'll have to listen. Because the sun is up, it's a beautiful day. My beginning will be as bright as the sun Come, won't you come along? And it feels so bright It's like luck is raining on me Go and follow your heart Doesn't matter how far There is so much love to give Something's telling me this time Baby, baby, now I know Baby, baby, gotta go There is so much love to give Something's telling me it's right When you came to me, oh I knew It's you, yeah, boy The one who showed me now and forever No, you'll never be alone again All day, oh yeah, all day Please stay in my arms, boy The one who showed me if we're together It don't matter if it rains All day, oh yeah, all day As long as you're in my arms, boy this beautiful day and the smiling holds the numb to your tight I guess the hearts can lie and it feels so bright The cold season rain has arrived and with it comes good news and bad news. The good news is tomorrow I'll be re sowing the front lawn with new seed. The bad news well to a certain extent this video has been interfered with to give something's telling me it's right when you came to me oh i knew it's you yeah boy the one who showed me now and forever no you'll never be alone again all day oh yeah all day please stay in my arms boy the one who showed me if we're together The way you like a song, you know my heart. Cause you know me, know my heart. Okay. We have a break between showers. Sun's decided to poke its way through just a little bit, but that'll close back over again when the rain comes back. And it's not far away. So I'm taking the opportunity to finish off this video. I'm sure the yard's looking greener compared to the last time you saw it. We've had three days of good rain and more on the way. Just here is the new mower. The one that's unfortunately just about the only model that Toro make that actually has a Chinese engine. 
Now, as I said, that's not a bad thing necessarily. It's not a good thing from my point of view either because I was hoping to have a Briggs and Stratton motor, the same as that one there, which I've gotten a fantastic run from. Well, obviously a more modern version of it. That one has an aluminium deck and it cost $1,000 20 years ago. This one has a steel deck and cost under $700 just a few weeks ago. Addressing those that price discrepancy first off, the first thing that comes to mind is when I bought this mower, there was no such thing as the GST, the goods and services tax. Um, so that was subjected to a few more taxes and levies than this one was. As for this one here, it's got an aluminium deck and that could be a big factor. This one has a steel deck. This has a broader foot than the old mower. One thing I do not like about this mower is that each wheel has its own height adjustment. Yes, I, I can understand that in some hilly country that could be beneficial, but it's not here because it's flat as a pancake. And also, where I had my business, Canberra, that was mountain, mountainous country too. And the single height adjustment, just there, you see, worked out well. I didn't have a problem with it. That, however, could become a nuisance, having to adjust all four wheels. That draws up the difference between commercial use and personal use. For personal use, you pretty much just set it and forget it and never touch it again for the rest of the mower life. For commercial use, you have got a variety of yards that you would be attending to. And yeah, there you would be adjusting the height more frequently, but also I can understand how that could be beneficial in some, uh, some mountainous or hilly areas. So I'm not saying it's the worst of things to have, I am saying that hey, I, I had a business in a mountainous area and I never really needed it. And B, I think that might be a minor nuisance. That mower there, I couldn't, I couldn't side discharge or rear discharge from because it would block up. I wanted a dedicated side chute and that's what I have. Now, this side chute comes off. Now, the other, one of the other issue, big issues I raised was when I was walking along, my feet would hit the catcher. Well, first off, this catcher is quite a long way away from my foot and it actually has a longer stride that I can take before I hit it. Secondly, this is canvas, so see, I'm not going to kick the catcher off. Thirdly, because of the side of this tube, I might not use the catcher at all, possibly. And finally, this uh, mower is also a mulching mower, which that one is not. The way the mulching works is the catcher gets taken off and I can't do that at the moment because one hand is holding the camera. But you take the catcher off and you don't have to install a plug like you do in many mowers, which I think is a bloody nuisance and quite frankly it's a pain in the ass because if you lose the plug you're stuffed. This has the same, same sort of system how 
to mulch the block, the hole off you, the hole of the chute. But it's done by lever. It doesn't have a plug you can lose. It's just simply open and close, open and close, that sort of thing. This blessed rain has delayed me you actually using the mower and giving you my impressions of it from there. So I'll bring out another video soon after this grass has had a chance to grow and dry out. Until then, be good to everybody and I'll see you soon. Hello folks, Paul from Aussie Outback Proving Grounds. We've got a video now, so I stuffed it already. Today we're... <laughs> Don't worry, it won't be an unboxing video because the last thing you need to see is how to undo a cardboard box by Paul. Got a video. Today we're up. Oh, it's one of those things, but eventually I'll get it.